Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, to a show that still does not have a name. If you have any name recommendations, let us know in the comment section below. But of course, I am joined by Josh of World Alternative Media. And last week, we told you, we're starting a new show. If it does well, we will do it every Saturday. We're back here. But the show had only 15,000 views and with a half of a million subscribers and also YouTube finagling, the video didn't do well. But I'm having a lot of fun. I'm enjoying working with Josh. Uh, and basic principles, if I like doing something, I'm going to keep doing it. So we're back here with the latest updates with cryptocurrencies. Josh, how are you and what is happening right now in the crypto world? Well, Luke, there was a massive crash in the market, not a collapse, but a crash. And that was basically due to uh, we hit about $20,000 about a month ago for one Bitcoin in US dollars. And we saw a dip back and forth. And it kind of came at the same time as these uh, future contracts came out for Bitcoin. And what I believe to have happened was there was at one point a few days ago, a massive sell off. And there's so much money sold out of the market that I do believe that it was a big banker sell off which ca caused a whole bunch of panic and that panic led to a bunch of what they call minnows people with small amounts of bitcoin all selling off out of panic now of course it's it, it went all the way down to about nine thousand us dollars and it's climbed past the eleven thousand eight hundred wall today to around thirteen thousand and it's breaking uh, all these res all this resistance that the market has had over the past few days. And I do believe it's going to continue to go up. But again, there is a massive amount of market manipulation like there is with anything. So uh, banks hate Bitcoin. They want nothing to do with Bitcoin when it comes to the average everyday person because it brings down their pyramid, I guess you could say. But when it comes down to it, they also want to get in on it and they want to make as much profit off of it because why wouldn't they? We've seen the same thing with gold and silver. Deutsche Bank was caught rigging uh, gold and silver for, for many years and was caught in a court of law alongside HSBC and a whole bunch of other uh, banks. So this is very usual to happen, but I don't think that there's any reason to really worry. I still see it going to about $100,000 by the end of 2018. Now, this isn't financial advice. This is simply my opinion. Uh, I have to legally say that, but I think that we are in for a massive climb in the future. And and there's a lot of things that contribute to this. So I wanted to quickly mention before we go on to the next headline, Luke, that a lot of people are investing a lot of money into altcoins that they know nothing about outside of Bitcoin. They are throwing billions of dollars into these coins because they like what they look like. They don't understand them. They don't know the fundamentals. And in that case, it's kind of the same thing as your wife, you know, uh, rooting for a football team because I don't know, maybe she likes dolphins or she likes the look of the jerseys. This is incredibly important to understand because while the derivatives at in the dot-com bubble don't exactly mimic the free market uh, cryptographic currency we see in the cryptocurrency world, there is a similarity when it comes to people rushing into anything because they like what it looks like. It reminds me of pets.com in the early 2000s. So I think it's important that people understand what they're getting into. There are some good ICOs that are like, like EOS or something. They actually have fundamentals. They have basic fundamentals. But do not invest in cryptocurrencies you know nothing about because there's a good chance they will crash before the consolidation of all cryptocurrencies in the near future. Just very simply, don't be a dumbass. And I have to say that for legal advice and whatever you said before, ditto, ditto, this is not legal advice or da 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 da, da doesn't matter. But I think it's also very interesting because I'm here at the Bitcoin conference uh, in Miami, Florida, and you see all these guys in these like Lamborghinis and Ferraris just stacked all around the hotel because it was a way for a lot of people to make a lot of money really quickly. But again, it's extremely unpredictable. It goes up and it goes down. And sadly, uh, there's been a kind of a different dichotomy here. And I think Jeff Berwick uh, uh, was the last speaker that was speaking at the conference. And he was like, hey, guys, we're here to remind you that this cryptocurrency thing is about getting rid of central bankers and helping spread freedom and liberty while helping out the common man. And then everyone cheered and erupted. But there definitely is this kind of get rich quick scheme kind of community, Wall Street butthole types that have kind of also are being very domineering in this cryptocurrency arena. And that's why, you know, there is a lot of manipulation. There is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, there is a lot of people just in it for the money and forgetting the real cause uh, and the real root and the real community that has brought Bitcoin from its infancies to where it is now. And very interesting, it was also 
curious to see, at the same time as we're seeing this kind of manipulation, this kind of price going down dramatically, this kind of escalation of the war of words with governments talking about regulating, regulating and taxing people who have cryptocurrencies. And that's why we just heard that the U.S. Uh, Department of Treasury is now attempting to police crypto exchanges, even trying to report people to the IRS, tax them to death, and of course, make it very difficult because it's almost impossible, especially with this recent tax code, to stay up to code and to document and to have all the financial numbers figured out when it comes to your taxes and Bitcoin. Josh, what do you think about that? Well, as I kind of went into last week, Luke, there was a massive attempt on January 1st through uh, IRS tax code uh, 1031 in order to make it a taxable event every time you go from one cryptocurrency to another back to whatever you're trading, which is almost impossible to enforce. I don't think it's it's really too concerning because I don't think they will long term get away with it. Uh, in fact, I think it'll actually just keep people more into crypto and not cashing out back into fiat, which is the ultimate bubble, which is something that we all want to escape at all costs. Exactly what you went into there, that this is a revolution against central banks, not, uh, you know, just a get get rich quick scheme. A lot of people have been really, really, uh, I guess you could say greedy in one way and spoiled in another way by the recent uh, rise of cryptocurrency, thinking that it's just going to go up all the time. Well, it's not always going to go up. It is a, a core fundamental that these are ways to escape the central banking system. But of course, the government is going to do everything they can to steal money. That's what they're what they do best. I mean, that's basically the only thing they're efficient in is stealing people's money. But they still aren't efficient enough to stop people from using cryptocurrencies, which is why they have all of this, you know, propaganda and psyop. Uh, tactic in order to confuse people about cryptocurrencies, push people into infighting like they have. Because as James James Corbett just recently uh, did a video, which was incredibly well uh, said, where he kind of went into the fact that people are looking at digital currencies by central banks in the same light as they see Bitcoin and blockchain. They're not all synonymous. They're all very different things that happen to have some kind of relevance to each other. Uh, so I think that this is really important to understand. Yeah, the propaganda is increasing, as we're just seeing even now this week, with a proposed U.S. task force in order to stop terrorism in the cryptocurrency world. And in reality, we know that terrorism, majority of it, predominantly, most of it, 99.9% .9 of it, is financed through fiat, through dollars. So, like the propaganda is escalating on so many different ways and I think the powers that be you could kind of make an argument that they're kind of using this kind of moment to take advantage and to hit uh, uh, cryptocurrencies when they're uh, low. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this is one of the biggest examples of hypocrisy is that they think that they're going to stop terrorism by, you know, stopping people from, you know, freely exchanging goods for services with cryptocurrencies. Meanwhile, like you mentioned, 99.9% .9 of money used to finance terrorism is fiat. So should we ban fiat? Well, maybe. And on top of that, what is the biggest uh, financier of terrorism? Government. Government has been sponsoring terrorism for decades, creating the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution, repeat, which is why I maybe it all comes down to, I don't know, banning government, because if we're really going to worry about, you know, people using Bitcoin, which, by the way, is a lot more traceable than using paper fiat in a suitcase then maybe we should be looking at government, which, which actually does finance terrorism, Al-Qaeda, you know, the Taliban meeting in the White House in the 80s, uh, Iraqis, Ba'athist Party, the, uh, you know, ISIS, obviously, there's so many examples. And the, the hypocrisy just piles so high. Of course, not that long ago, I believe it was last year under Trump, there was a move in order to uh, stop people at the border when they're crossing and try and uh, check their Bitcoin wallets, which I think it was called Combating Money Laundering, Terrorist Financing and Counterfeiting Act of 2017. And again, cannot be enforced. If we want to stop terrorism, we have to stop the government from funding terrorism, not people trying to, you know, make a bit of money and invest 
invest in something that is pulling away from the central banking system that enslaves us. So I think that it's important that we understand the differences. The idea of people financing terrorism with Bitcoin, a woman was just caught two weeks ago trying to do that because it was traceable. You can trace one address to another to a bank account. Unless you are getting all your money from you know something like Steemit and you know transferring it around, you are basically transparent out in the open. People can see what you're doing. So the idea is absurd. It's just an excuse to call any you know free individual a terrorist while ignoring the fact that, well, wait a second, we are the ones that are funding terrorism. We are the ones that are creating it. We are the ones that are bombing countries overseas and arming the rebels and then causing a new problem to give an excuse to go back in. It's all the same old nonsense over again. And this leads me to the next story, which Wait, wait, wait. I, that... just, I just think they want a monopoly of control when it comes to arming terrorism. They're like, we can only do it, not you. And by, <laughs> by, that, by that same kind of logic, I mean, we might as well ban forks because it makes people fat asses. Like, it makes no sense at all. And it's interesting to see them specifically pinpoint Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, especially during this time. Uh, go ahead, Josh. Well, absolutely. And it's important to understand that the blockchain can be good, used for good and evil. So, you know, uh, as uh, again, James Corbett went into recently, something I've been talking about for quite a long time at World Alternative Media is that w the blockchain is kind of like guns. You can use a gun to massacre a whole bunch of people, but you could also use a gun to save a whole bunch of people from being massacred. So we have to understand the difference, which I'll go into in a second. But that kind of leads me to the next article, which is Merkel and Macron call for a ban on cryptos in Europe. Again, not enforceable in a quote unquote, whatever you want to call it, democracy. It is absolutely impossible to truly ban cryptocurrencies. In fact, if anyone is going to be uh, flooding out of something, it's going to be out of fiat into cryptocurrencies. They know their time is up. They know people are waking up to the monetary system fraud. They know that people are trying to protect their wealth because they've been stolen from for so many years by government and they are worried, they are scared and they're doing everything they can to try and FUD, F-U-D the market and cause it to dip and then they go in and buy it up low. Exactly something that you'd expect from a government that is trying to manipulate markets and tax people to death. But of course, on top of that, we have to remember, like I said earlier, that bankers still use uh, Bitcoin in order to grow their own wealth because they know their empire is coming down. So people like Mario Draghi, the head of the ECB, the European Central Bank, is a Goldman Sachs boy. And being a Goldman Sachs boy, he is involved in cryptocurrencies himself. He has probably got a lot of investments in them, as many at Goldman, Goldman Sachs have been getting themselves deep into. So the idea of them banning it, it would come down to the ECB in the end and the European Union. And I don't see them doing that. They will try and tax it. They will try to regulate it. But in the end, it won't matter because the banking system is coming to its dying days. The banking system is going down and people, this is, an, this is exactly why it's going down. People are flooding into free market cryptocurrencies, diversifying their portfolio, gold, silver as well. This is so important. And we are seeing the end to all of this, you know, massive Ponzi scheme that we call the central Central banking system. I was talking exactly about this with Max Kaiser yesterday, and he made the point, like, if you want to see a Ponzi scheme, look at the central banking systems and how they manipulate the markets and how they're overinflated and how ultimately it is a grand scheme against the people. Uh, just look at the way it works. Just look at the secrecy behind it. Look at the fact that there hasn't been any real audits of the U.S quasi-private Federal Reserve banking system. That's why they kind of see it as a threat. But the bigger point that you made here that I think is important for everyone to understand, just because these people are against it doesn't mean it can't be used for bad, like we've seen this week with the BitConnect crash and the other Ponzi schemes that have been involved and the dirty tricks that people do use cryptocurrencies to do bad things and hurt other people. Again, everything is a double-edged sword. The internet, fiat, cryptocurrencies, a fork, it's all about how you treat it and being responsible and not just biased on one side. But what do you have on the BitConnect uh, story that everyone here is talking about uh, a lot? Yeah, well, absolutely. It dropped about 96 or 97 percent in 24 hours, went from a, a high of 400 and something dollars, U.S. dollars. But for people like who don't understand, what is BitConnect? 
BitConnect is basically this massive company that has been bringing in a ton of Bitcoin, getting people to give them a whole bunch of Bitcoin and then giving them these uh, BitConnect tokens where they promise they will get like these residual payments, you know, the usual Ponzi scheme kind of scenario. And what that has led to is a whole bunch of people giving them insane amounts of money, over a billion dollars. And at once we saw their website go down uh, the other day and the drop all the way from 400 and something dollars to around 20 US dollars. And, you know, they have kind of disappeared on, on this. They're not really giving a good explanation other than, well, they got a cease and desist order recently. Absolute nonsense. This is exactly why people need to be self-responsible because the hallmark of freedom itself is self-responsibility, which is why people have to do their own dil due diligence, which we, we see so many Ponzi schemes popping up. And this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say we should avoid these, uh, you know, altcoins that we know nothing about. Oh, well, the, you know, the logo looks cool. It's a cool color. It has a cool name. Well, that is it has Snoop Dogg promoting it. Snoop Dogg's promoting this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't fall for these kinds of things, these tricks, like Potcoin, where Dennis Rodman is going to North Korea wearing a Potcoin shirt and everyone's like, okay, we got to buy it up and there's a pump and then we see it all dumped down. This is not how this market's supposed to work. Of course, the free market's always right and people are often not that smart. For example, people uh, go to the least quality burger joint called, you know, McDonald's. And McMurder Burger. Tons. Yeah, exactly. But is it high quality? No. Are the fundamentals good? No. It's a terrible quality restaurant, but people go there. It's one of the biggest burger joints in the world. And this is just kind of the reality of things. And we saw that in the dot-com bubble and the ones with bad fundamentals will come crashing down. Bitcoin to the crypto bubble is like Amazon and Google and YouTube or YouTube wasn't around. Amazon and Google to the dot-com bubble. We don't want to invest in pets.com. We want to invest in Amazon early on, except for the differences. Of course, this is decentralized and will actually pull away from the establishment system that we are trying to get away from. But I wanted to finish this off quickly, Luke, by just going quickly into the difference between fiat and Bitcoin, because no matter how many videos I do on this, there will always be those comments. And I understand there's a lot of confusion about it. Uh, fiat is centrally planned uh legal tender currency based in quantitative easing debt, just devaluing it by its printing. There's no cap on creation. While Bitcoin is decentralized free market, has 21 million tokens that will ever be created by the year 2140. And that is it. Fundamentally, it cannot go higher. There can be forks with different ideas at hand, but Bitcoin will never surpass that mark. So therefore it halves re uh, quite frequently, which grows the value. And it is absolutely the opposite of fiat. Of course, it's uh, based in scarcity, demand, and application use. And I just, I have to always go over this uh, point, Luke, because there are a lot of people that look at it and they see it's created out of thin air, so it must be the same as fiat. Fiat has a set of fundamentals that is based in debt and non-stop quantitative easing and fractional reserve lending. They are very different from each other. There are attempts to create a global crypto or a global centrally planned cryptocurrency, but they are not the same as Bitcoin. Bitcoin will never be used as a global special drawing rights currency at the IMF and there are a lot of videos going around uh, spreading a lot of misinformation about this it will not happen they will use another digital currency like maybe ripple or something and trick people into buying it up because it looks shiny and has a cool name that I just I always have to go into that point Luke yeah I mean you have to be careful because the you know, establishment could come in we're seeing Facebook we're seeing uh, the UK government we're seeing all these other institutions that are uh, in the long run, morally wrong and corrupt, talking about going into the cryptocurrency world, trying to get their foot into the door from something that was originally decentralized, something that people, of course, see as a threat and is very difficult to stop. They can make it difficult for users to take out their money or to use it, but there really is no way of getting rid of Bitcoin or of cryptocurrencies. You would have to get rid of, of the entire internet. You could always change your IP. You could always mask who you are online. You could always figure out a runaround. And this is a problem. This is a paradox that I'm seeing that will come to a big 
clash, I think, sooner or later. This is so unpredictable. This is such a fun, crazy, wild ride where you never know what's going to happen. Always try to use your best mind. Always try to uh, do the right thing. Be smart. Don't be stupid. Don't just go out there buying Ferraris. Don't just always try to get rich. When you do those things, humanity and life will always kick you in the butt when your morals and your principles are wrong. So uh, other than that, Josh, I think uh, it's, it's been a crazy week. Bitcoin's been, been going down. Cryptocurrency has been going down. But there's also a lot of optimism and a lot of hope. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for bringing everyone into the loop and letting us know exactly what happened this week with cryptocurrencies. To check out Josh, his YouTube channel will be in the description below. If you found this video important, if you liked it, share it with your friends and family members. And of course, I love you. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.